from worst to best, Castlevania bosses. The original Castlevania has reached a sort of legendary status on the NES. It's a game that isn't the pinnacle of difficulty, but it's just hard enough for beating it to be a pretty big test of platforming skill. Being a basic game is one of the things that makes Castlevania such a challenge, with skilled players being able to take advantage of the limited controls and knockback. On a side note, Castlevania has one of the best NES cover designs. I always thought Dracula looked like the Joker. This game in particular has some of the most challenging bosses on the NES, and today we are going to rank them from worst to best. Before we begin, let's take a look at the determining factors to how these bosses are ranked. Number one, the battle itself, how it plays, and its strategies. Number two, how does the battle affect the main character at the time of the fight? Number three, the lore behind the boss, and number four, the boss's design and setting. Unlike games like Zelda and Metroid, the parameters for the rankings are a little bit looser for a game like Castlevania. For instance, Simon Belmont doesn't gain any experience through the story that could help him level to level. So how the battles affect him and the lore behind the bosses, with the game's information limited to guides and manuals, will be less important than the strategies and designs this time around. Anyway, let's get started, beginning with the boss battle that is ranked the lowest. Medusa Medusa has a bit of a bad rep in the early Castlevania games because of those annoying Medusa heads that come at you at the absolute worst times. And unfortunately for Medusa, she isn't a very good boss either. Her strategy entails ramming into Belmont and launching snakes as projectiles. While it may not seem that bad, this battle is frustrating enough to make you want to stun her with holy water and beat her to a pulp with your whip. It doesn't help that her design looks like the head of a middle-aged woman who looks like she just rolled out of bed. Too bad for her, the most interesting connection that she has comes from her mythological roots that aren't even addressed in this battle. Frankenstein's Monster and Igor Frankenstein's monster is a legendary horror icon, and it saddens me to put him this low on the list. However, this boss fight is infuriating. Not even because of the monster, but because of that leaping gargoyle pain in the neck Igor. Igor is invincible and constantly jumps into Simon Belmont, as well as shoots an endless array of fireballs at him. Frankenstein's monster is the true target and would be remarkably easy without Igor. I have literally killed Frankenstein's monster only to have Igor still jump into me causing a death more times than I'd like to admit. The best thing going about this fight, however, is the monster's awesome sprite design. The Mummies The Mummies are another example of a handicapped boss battle in Castlevania. The way the match begins, the player is practically forced in between both mummies, which is where you don't want to be. Not only do they slam Belmont on both sides, they also launch projectile wrappings. The best way to do battle with these fiends, besides staying on the breakable block, is to maneuver around one of them and whip both mummies continuously at the same time. The battle is easier than the frankenstein Igor battle and better designed in a gameplay perspective. Unfortunately, the mummy design seems pretty generic. Phantom Bat The Phantom Bat is a very basic boss, and honestly, he is the only boss a lot of young gamers get to see when playing this game. However, there is something special about an introduction boss done right. The Phantom Bat has a very basic attack pattern, and this acts as a great way for players to get a grasp of the controls and learn as they play. With a little strategy, you will find yourself being able to take on more complicated bosses as you improve, and that is what makes this a good boss. You even get to see a few more of the Phantom Bats later on. Besides, the menacing bat design works well, especially when you first see him perched up on the ceiling. The Spirit of Dracula The final big bat of Castlevania provides an air of brutal intensity. By the time you battle this bizarre creature, the player's anxiety and tension is at its peak. However, the only reason why this boss is difficult is because you have to run a gauntlet with his previous form. But this monster ranks so high because of the tension that he gives. Anyone who has reached the Spirit of Dracula knows exactly what I mean. He gives a ton of damage and receives very little. Even holy water, unless timed extremely accurately, is risky. The design is interesting to say the least. I can't tell if it's amazing or terrible. Writing this and looking closely as of right now, I'm gonna say it's awesome. Death. Oh my god. This game is a 
Death is the most difficult boss in Castlevania. This is not debatable. Sure, you can freeze him in the very beginning with perfectly timed holy water and spam, but even so, this boss is extremely difficult to say the least. While some might argue this, I placed Death so high because if you were skilled enough, you can destroy his sights and beat him. It's just easier said than done. I just think that how brutal this battle is is a good thing. Although, like Igor, you can get hit by his scythe after Death is dead, so be careful. Anyway, the intense battle is complemented by Death's awesome design in this game. Honestly, he could have been a final boss. Count Dracula This choice is going to be controversial, but hear me out. This battle seems droll and appears to be just a placeholder to face Dracula's final form. The battle is basic, dodge Dracula, jump over his blasts, and whip his head. This repetition is almost maddening, but it's actually quite brilliant. Think back to your childhood. Most platforming games of this era or later are games that you can literally run right through. Think about Super Mario Bros. Most young players want the immediate gratification of speeding through a level and killing a boss. That doesn't happen with this fight. This was designed to be methodical and psych you out. The fight before this is death for Christ's sake. You can't even stand still in that battle at all. But here with Dracula, you stand and wait. This battle brilliantly takes the conventions of previous battles and throws them in the wind, while taking the anxiousness and hype of getting to the final boss and slamming it down. That feeling of adrenaline can cost you by making you want to speed up the process or get in that extra hit. Taking that into consideration changed my view on this fight. Besides, whipping this asshole's head off is legendary. Thank you so much for watching this Castlevania episode of From Worst to Best. If you enjoyed it, make sure you go watch my Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time version. I did the same thing by ranking all the bosses from worst to best. And if you want to watch anything super funny, go watch the Mario Kart Double Dash video. It's unforgettable.